everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Efron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So as you know, Tuesday means it's Type 2 or Standard Tuesday, and we got a really sweet creature deck to check out today featuring one of the most hyped cards from Ixalan that just hasn't really caught on yet, but it might be catching on now. We're talking about Growing Rights of Itlamok. I'm calling this one Green White Growing Rights. Comes to us from Vivil, who took it to a 5-0 finish in a competitive Standard League on Magic Online. So congrats to Vivival on a super sweet deck. A quick reminder before we break down green, white, growing rights for standard. If you enjoy this deck and you'll want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Green White Growing Rights is built around Growing Rights of Itlamok, basically kind of like this commune with the gods type effect, goes digging 40 for a creature when it enters the battlefield for three mana. The big deal though is if we can get enough creatures on the battlefield which happens to be four, then we get to flip around our growing rights of Itlamok into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun, which gives us basically a Gaia's Cradle, a land that taps for a green, or, if we so choose, we can tap it for a green mana for each creature we control, which means we can potentially use it to make a ton of mana. So, one of the weird things about growing rights in Standard is they aren't that many payoffs. I mean, obviously, if we can flip it around and tap for like 5 mana, 7 mana, 10 mana, we can use it to cast multiple things in a turn, which is fine, but our big payoff to just finish the game is Walking Ballista. So, kind of our finisher is once we flip around our growing rights into Illima Cradle of the Sun, we can use all that mana and just dump it all into Walking Ballista, cast it with a ton of counters if we have to, keep adding more counters to it, and ping our opponent to death directly, which is kind of nice. It gives us like this weird fireball type effect in our green white deck, which is something green and white decks don't usually have. As for the rest of our deck, it's kind of divided into two separate parts, really. We kind of have two distinct themes. So, theme number one in support of Growing Rights with Walking Blist as our finisher is Explore. We have Wild Growth Walker, kind of an unappreciated card, but actually really powerful if you can do a lot of exploring. So, two mana, you get a 1-3. Whenever you explore, it gets a counter, and you gain three life. So, if you can explore a lot of times, it gets pretty big for a two-drop and gains you a bunch of life. So, you're not going to die quickly against Ramen on Pred, other aggro decks. So, what are we exploring with? And we go pretty deep. We got the two heavily played Explorer creatures, Merfolk Branchwalker, Jade Light Ranger, which are just really good value creatures. Even non-Explorer themed decks play these creatures because they just generate a lot of value. They do something when they enter the battlefield. If you draw land, that's great. If you get to control your draw and get a bigger creature, that's also great. So they're just very powerful, very efficient. We also have the one of Path of Discovery. Just makes it so anytime a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get to explore, which means no matter what we do, whether we be making tokens, just playing normal creatures. We get a lot of explore value, keep churning through our deck, and it kind of leads us to the second part of our deck. So apart from growing rights with Ballista and the explore package, we're kind of going wide with tokens. So we got Sram's Expertise, just makes three servos, little extra value by casting something for free. Angel of Invention puts three bodies on the battlefield, assuming we choose to make servos when we fabricate. Also pumps our team, which is good because we got a lot of small creatures, and these cards are key for making sure that that once we flip our growing rights, we actually get to add a lot of mana. We need a lot of creatures on the battlefield, both to flip it, and then after we flip it, to be able to make as much mana as possible to dump into our walking ballista, and we kind of round out our token package with a single Avaya Parishi Sage Lifecrafter. Eh, not heavily played, but it's kind of another mana payoff. If we have a land that can tap for five mana, we can just use that one land to keep making a huge XX construct token every single turn, eventually over our opponent. As far as the rest of the deck, we have Rishkar Pima Renegade, which is a pretty good value card, makes a little extra mana, puts some counters on things. A Johnny Unyielding gives us a big top end Planeswalker, where we're able to dig through our deck to generate some card advantage, maybe Swords to Plowshare away some of our opponent's creatures. If we ultimate, we should pretty much win the game. Finally, a bit of removal in the form of Cast Out, 
As far as the mana beige, Arch of Araska gives us just a good value colorless land. We make a lot of tokens. We're going pretty wide with our angels and with our Strom's Expertise, which means we're going to turn on Ascend eventually. Then we can just draw cards if we don't have anything else going on. Chef at Dunes to pump all of our creatures. Some basic lands, some dual lands. In the sideboard, we get a bunch more utility creatures. Death Gorge Scavenger, great against aggro, gaining us life. Also, a good way to hit on graveyards against decks like the Scarab God, against God Pharaoh's Gift. As a can Archer, I guess, is to kill little creatures against like Robin Opera, taking out Bombat Couriers and stuff. Pretty good blocker. Kind of a weird option, but if you're really worried about killing X1s, it does do a really good job of that. A Catcher of the True makes tokens. Big attacking threat because we make so many creatures. Thrashing Brontodon and Naturalize give us some ways to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Nissa gives us a good resilient threat against Control Decks. Comes down, ultimates in one turn, play lands, draw cards, can kill our opponent with the elemental tokens, get some graveyard value, and then Dust Dawn is kind of just our big trump card against decks like Dinosaurs with a few big creatures, a Scarab God, also gives us a big source of card advantage against decks that are playing things like Fumigate to sweep away our board, and that is Green White Growing Rights for Standard, and that's our instant deck deck for today, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.